What's up, Doc? What's up is the croc that is Elrock. The Looney Lunar Reconnaissance Orbital Paintbrush and Digital Rendering Brigade, and those who trust in and believe that graphics, drawings, and animation are real. So earlier today I stumbled across the Lunar and Planetary Institute. I got there from an image that I found. Somebody was trying to claim that the image was real. So I went to this uh, location and from there found a link to a video that's over at the LROC site, which is the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbital Camera. And here's the most amazing thing, that the three things I'm about to present, it's not as if I dug through the site to find them. They are the first three things I found. First three things I looked at and I was so appalled, I said, all right, let's make a video. So there's much more to find there, I'm sure. First up, though, is a video of the moon that I found at LROC. The link is in the description. While you watch it, I'm going to be reading word for word the description of the video that you see here in front of you now. So as this video begins, and I'm going to let you start watching it, we notice a few things here. First, is this video real? Think about that. Maybe I'm about to read to you that the video is not an animation. Well, maybe I'm about to read to you that it is. Maybe I'm about to say that it is an artistic rendering. Maybe it's not. Well, let's read while you watch and find out what exactly is this video. Introduction by David A. Kring. From the Earth to the Moon is a brief but vivid video and audio recording that provides an inspirational view of the lunar surface, which humans have not visited since 1972, despite being the best and most accessible place in the solar system to explore the fundamental principles of our origins. Highlights vast portions of the lunar surface that have yet to be explored, and demonstrates how new images are revealing dramatic details of future landing sites suitable for both robotic and human missions. The scenes in this video are so dramatic that you may find yourself reaching out to pick up a rock and becoming restless to walk among the lunar peaks. We encourage you to download the HD version of the video, see the link below, to fully marvel at this tour of the lunar surface. The beautiful lunar landscapes captured in the video includes exposures of the lunar crust that will reveal, if sampled by future missions, the earliest processes associated with the formation of the Earth-Moon system, the evolution of the Moon through a period of planet-wide magma ocean, and a subsequent period of intense bombardment that repeatedly modified the surfaces of Earth, Moon, and the other inner solar system planets. The late period of heavy impact bombardment may have been triggered by a rearrangement of the outer solar system planets. Thus, the Moon is providing details of our own origins, the origins and evolution of all inner solar system planets, and the origin and evolution of outer solar system planets as well. Moreover, that period of bombardment immediately precedes the earliest isotopic evidence of life on Earth and thus may have been involved in the origin and early evolution of life on Earth. Previous missions explored only a tiny portion of the Moon, and current exploration of space from the International Space Station has left us trapped in low Earth orbit. To further understand the planet-altering processes described above and to further develop the technical capabilities needed to explore space, we need to return to the lunar surface. Let's never stop exploring. This next part, emphasis mine, pay attention to. From Earth to the Moon is produced from an integrated set of lunar images and topographical measurements. The video is not an animation sequence or artistic rendering of the Moon. Most of the images and topographical data were obtained by the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter, in particular the NASA Lunar Reconnaissance Orbital Camera, LROC, and the Lunar Orbiter Laser Altimeter LOLA teams, and rendered by ourselves, Robert Cumia at Louisiana State University and the Goddard Space Flight Center Scientific Visualization Studio. So wait, it's not an artistic rendering of the moon because you rendered it yourself, Robert Cumia and the Goddard Space Flight Center. What does that mean? I'll read the sentence one more time. The video is not an animation sequence or artistic rendering of the moon sentence later, and rendered by ourselves. So if I render something myself, it's not an artist rendering. Hey, whatever. Believe what you guys want. Uh, no bother to me. This next image is the image that got me there in the first place. This image here, somebody sent me and said is a real image of the moon. So I said, where'd this image come from? So I had to do a little bit of exploring, and I found it, and let's read together whether or not this is a real image, or is that simply computer graphics? It says, on June 10th, 2011, the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbital spacecraft slewed 65 degrees to the west, allowing the LROC narrow-angle cameras to capture this spectacular sunrise view of the mountainous peaks in the center of Tycho Impact Crater. 
geologists are anxious to hike through this area to collect samples dredged up from the lunar interior by the impact event and to collect samples of impact melt that will test our models of the asteroid and comet bombardment of the Earth-Moon system. Tycho Crater is 83 kilometers in diameter, surrounded by white rays of ejected rock that are visible from your own backyard. The summit of the 15-kilometer-wide central peak arises 2 kilometers above the crater floor, which is 4.7 kilometers below the crater rim, producing a spectacular landscape that rivals, if not surpasses, many of the natural geologic wonders of Earth. The crater is several times deeper than the Grand Canyon, and its central peak is a significantly higher prominence than Pikes Peak in the Rocky Mountains. Detail from LROC, NAC, image number something, image credit, uh, NASA. Uh, this is supposedly a real image. <laughs> okay. Uh, then I found the next image and said, okay, this clearly looks like a artist rendering. This is not real. This is not a photograph. Let's read about it and kind of take a look at it real quick. So how high do you think that looks? Let's go ahead and read together what the details are on this image. It says below the image here, the largest mountains on the moon rival those of the Earth. Here, Zeman Mons, informal name, rises more than 24,500 feet above the floor of the Zeman crater. And the flank of Zeman Y is just visible to the right side of the image. View looking to the west from an altitude of 21 miles. Wait a second. This image is from 21 miles high? Um, okay, let's uh, take a look at some uh, balloon footage from Earth from 21 miles high. All right, what we're looking at here is a Dwayne Kellum video, and you'll see on the left there it says feet 101,000, so we're about 20 miles high. Uh, see those mountains down there? Those are the Sierra Nevadas. They are 15,000 feet high, which is three miles. The mountain that we saw on the moon uh, was supposedly two miles higher for five miles high, but you tell me if that's what we were looking at there. Uh, so this is 21 miles high about, and you can see as we spin around that uh, there you are looking at the San Francisco Bay. We spin around a little bit more, you see the Monterey Bay. Spin around even more. You can see all the way down to Los Angeles. Now we see the Sierra Nevadas. Again, the Sierra Nevadas are 15,000 feet. And here we go looking again at the image from the moon that is supposedly from the same height, looking at a mountain 25,000 feet rather than 15,000 feet. Again, believe what you want. Let's go to the next video. What we're looking at here is another balloon launch that is 100,000 feet high, 20 miles approximately. And as you can see, uh, you don't even see mountains here. I mean, that are anywhere even noticeable. However, NASA tells you what you would see on the moon, which is crazy. And anybody who thinks that they see curvature here doesn't understand optics. Uh, clearly, look at here, we see it bending down. Now as the camera comes up, watch it bend the other way. Up, oh, Stephen Christopher was right. Oh, nope, maybe it's flat. Oh, nope, maybe it's curved. It is your view circle. It's not the curvature of a ball. Imagine if you got up top of a ball, what it would look like. It wouldn't look like this. Now, I can already hear the NASA fanboy crybaby brigade. You liar! Moron! Is reality! Science, bro! You're only doing this for money! Flat tar! You're doing this for clicks! You're doing this for YouTube fame! Drink bleach! You're being intellectually dishonest! Here's the sphere! Coming to tell me... This image is zoomed in! The balloon footage is not! Haven't you ever heard of Zoom? Moron! So I say to them, can you please contact NASA and tell them to put an end to the whole moon landing conspiracy hoax denier group by simply zooming in on the rover, or on the LEM, or on the flag, or on any item that's on the moon, rather than showing us these clearly CGI images. The problem I have is with NASA spending my tax money to the tune of $52 million a day. That's $1.5 billion a month. Most of us cannot even comprehend that kind of money. It's ridiculous beyond understanding. And again, you can believe what you want. Believe in Saturn, believe in Mars, believe in Jupiter and the galaxies of trillions of suns, all you want. But for NASA to use my tax money to lie to my kid and my family, I'm not gonna sit back and swear by the holy priests of JPL and worship math as if it's reality. It's not. Be kind, don't lie, and don't render images and then call them not rendered. That's called a lie. Till next time, guys, this has been Jaronism. That's all fake. I hope you enjoyed this video presentation. If you did, 
please subscribe to my YouTube channel, like the video, and share it on your favorite social media sites. There's a lot more to come, so stay tuned, and we'll see you back next time.